Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets on the Wednesday, the 9th of March 2016. Okay, now uh, this video, as always, is being brought to you on courtesy of uh, CFDs.com. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of that healthy uh, starting bonus offer. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site, which is www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, now let's try and look at this market from a chronological perspective. The US markets closed negative overnight. Uh, we had the uh, Euro uh, Asian markets overnight, certainly in the red as well. The Nikkei down 0.8%, Hang Seng more or less flat, but the Shanghai down 1.3%. So they certainly set a uh, risk off tone uh, prior to Mr. Draghi, as we all know. Uh, but the market certainly has ignored uh, Mr. Draghi thus far and certainly have uh, propelled higher, which is very, very impressive. Okay, so uh, QE certainly uh, wins and uh, fundamentals certainly lose. Now, in terms of the bearish uh, uh, bias on this market, we've had concerns with regards to Volkswagen, the potential uh, fraud case that's open there, okay, in the US. Uh, Eon record loss, post record loss, certainly a negative for the markets. Uh, now, we also have had U uh, UK data out this morning as well. Uh, we have uh, strikes in France, uh, potential deadlock there. Uh, now, that certainly is, doesn't bode well at all. Iron ore certainly has evaporated, uh, and also rail strikes in France as well, not to mention. Now, there is a lot of um, arguments for the market certainly to move lower, especially with regards to copper being into resistance, crude oil potentially into resistance, and the gain between Iran and uh, the potential output freeze continues. Now, the economic data out of the UK, I think that was really the only main uh, sticking point this morning. Industrial production came in more or less in line all on a year-on-year, -year, but month-on-month -month certainly beat. Uh, industrial production, uh, manufacturing production certainly beat, but industrial productions failed to uh, hit its target. So, mixed set of data there, okay, overall net-net neutral. Mortgage applications are out in the UK, US right now, and they have come out at 0.2%, slightly better than expected, which in turn should help the... Uh, the actual dollar to potentially recover okay so uh, given the fact that asian markets were down overnight and uh, given the fact that uh, commodities are potentially now into resistance you are looking at a potential risk off scenario now if i just bring up the chart of uh, copper first of all as you can see the daily chart of copper uh, has put in a bearish uh, engulfing candle at a 200 ma you're just consolidating now for a potential retest of this uh, breakout level below looking at a four hour chart you can clearly see there's a bear flag in play therefore looking to move lower and the 60-minute chart is making lower lows and lower highs. So copper certainly remains bearish, okay? Now, if I bring up the chart of uh, crude oil, okay? Crude oil, certainly uh, you are hogging onto this diagonal trend line, so certainly holding there. 60-minute chart clearly shows you a h &S formation in play. You are looking at this right shoulder that's in play now, looking for it to potentially thrust lower. The 10-minute chart as well is certainly coming into exhaustion now. You do have this previous support equals resistance zone just... Uh, not too far off at $37.3 uh, on the uh, price of oil. So certainly looking for a potential thrust to remove lower. Okay. Now, in terms of the euro itself, yes, we have sold off on the 10-minute chart, certainly hit a pivot low of 1.0960, but we are now potentially breaking higher and looking to potentially thrust. And uh, as we all know, this sell-off on the euro from 1.1060 down to uh, well, down almost 90 pips certainly has helped the European indices potentially uh, move higher based on the expectations of QE. But the now, euro now is potentially coming into support based on this diagonal trend line, and therefore you are looking at a risk-off mode. Given the fact that Asian markets were down, I did expect further weakness, but that certainly has not um, materialised. Uh, the uh, European markets have been bid up on the expectation or even fear of potential QE increase tomorrow. Okay, now let's bring up the chart of the euro stocks because that is one of the ones that's really bad for me today. Yes, we do we do have the inverted head and shoulders formation target of 3310, and you are looking at potentially moving higher. That's if Draghi delivers. Now, given the fact that economic data this week, given especially with regards to Germany and the rest of the EU as well, uh, Germany is specifically is, is certainly stellar. Yesterday's economic data was strong. Factory orders were, were more or less in line, potentially higher. So no real cause for concern. So I can't see how the Germans will be able to uh, justify QE. If anything, they'll be anti-QE. So it's going to be very hard to see envisage any uh, real um, market beating uh, QE news from Mr. Draghi. Again, if you look at the price of the euro, if I bring, let's bring up the euro USD, the daily chart certainly is telling me something else. Now, the daily chart you can clearly see on the uh, on the price of Euro USD. 
Let me just bring up the daily chart for you. You can see that we've certainly pushed higher. We're consolidated, consolidating here now and potentially pushing higher. Now, if I bring up the chart, the Euro Bund as well, the, the Bunds certainly are telling me a different picture now. If I bring up the chart of the Bunds, bear with me. If I go to the daily chart, you clearly see you have a HS formation on the Bunds, okay? So, certainly indicating weakness from my perspective. Again, indicating weakness. You can clearly see the HS formation that's brewing there. Okay, and you're looking for potential move lower. So you have the left shoulder, your head, right shoulder's been put in, and therefore you're looking to move lower. So certainly disappointment from my perspective. Certainly disappointment. Now again, if this makes takes takes this level out and makes a new high, then obviously we all know the euro is going to collapse. Okay, and uh, you are looking at uh, a potential uh, reversal in the equity markets as well. So bear that in mind, folks. Okay, the bond is linked with the indices or indexes. So the bond market starts in terms of price starts to move higher, the yields move lower, which sends the euro lower, and obviously equity markets uh, benefit from that. Now, that obviously hasn't been the case as of late, uh, as you can clearly see. Um, now, given the fact that the bond market has stalled and yet the equity markets have stalled somewhat, but not obviously reversed uh, as uh, many expected, especially given the fact that Chinese exports were down 25%. And the market certainly hasn't priced that in at all. So very, very strange. Okay. So going back to the euro stocks, you're going back and retesting that zone there. You have key resistance levels here. Now, if the market certainly pushes higher, then you have a gap just above. Uh, currently at uh, on the euro stocks, you have a gap at 3070. So that would be a zone that will potentially short. Again, 3120 then comes into play. So it's an interesting scenario here, folks. Okay, interesting scenario. Is this a short squeeze fair going into Draghi tomorrow? Mm. I did expect this gap fill to hold at uh, 30337. Even that hasn't held, and the market's obviously pushed and broke broken higher. So interesting scenario, interesting scenario thus far. So again, resistance at 3050, bear that in mind. You have a topping tail there as well on a 60 minute chart, and that topping tail should technically hold, okay? That topping tail was put in at uh, 3055. Okay, so bear that in mind. Okay, now in terms of the uh, alternative indices, you can see the uh, SP Euro 350 on daily charts, certainly into resistance, hence the reason why my bias is bearish on the Euro stocks. And the, you can see the daily chart of the Euro stock 600 as well, or the stock 600 certainly holding and into resistance now let's look at the actual sectors as well i mean european uh not the your FTSE, but the european banks let's see where they are FTSE 350 FTSE 350 here we go okay s p financials so financial certainly resistance okay on the on the daily chart certainly indicating potential resistance now 60 minute chart you clearly see that better okay so back into that resistance zone and therefore you're looking at a risk off scenario bringing up the financials okay so bringing up the energy sector again you are into resistance on the energy sector too okay so bear that in mind so horizontal resistance is an inside day thus far if you go to the 60 minute chart it's not showing you in terms of data correctly that certainly is the zone that we're looking at now bear with me one second whilst i just bring up another chart for you Stocks 600 Bank. There we go. Oops, there it. It's not working well on the daily. No, it didn't work well. Bear with me. Let's have a look here. Not working. Okay, let's just leave that for now. It's not working. It's not working. Okay, so it's not really moving, giving me any data at the moment. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. Okay, so basically you can see the banks and the energy sector certainly is into potential resistance. Okay, now bringing up the French CAC, let's just bring up the CAC and see exactly where we stand. The French CAC now is again six ten minute chart 
potentially coming into resistance 60 minute chart back into that resistance into that gap fill zone daily chart as well back into that gap fill resistance on the french cat too now the german dax itself german dax you can see we are back into gap fill resistance on the german dax so you're looking to potentially move and move lower a 60 minute chart back into that resistance zone and therefore looking to move lower now let's bring up the chart of the FTSE 100 because the FTSE 100 is an interesting indices as always the, the, the daily chart uh, at the moment you've broken out of the uh, rising uh, contracting wedge you have an inside bar at the moment looking to potentially move lower going over to the 60 minute chart the FTSE 100 you have you have this H&S formation in play the right shoulder is still brewing at the moment and looking for the markets to potentially move lower okay based on the FTSE itself now the 10 minute chart the FTSE yeah, I did short the FTSE at this FIB 75%. We certainly have, have exceeded that now. You are, you are back into that zone, resistance zone, at 6174. So watch out for that zone. Okay, that should be uh, interesting. If you move higher, then you have 6182. Uh, very unlikely for us to exceed that. Now, the market has surprised me here uh, and certainly has broken past that level, which is quite interesting. I mean, it's interesting. Also, given the fact that you have this diagonal trend line, we've taken out both, and the FTSE certainly is stellar this morning. We've had prudential earnings. That will certainly helped the FTSE to a large extent, but that was certainly factored in given the fact that we had a pivot low of 6100 uh, yesterday. So interesting scenario, okay? Interesting scenario with regards to FTSE. If the market continues to move higher, then you have 6175. The next resistance level is 6182. If you uh, thrust past there, then obviously that will be base and oil, and you are looking at 6200 and 6220 again. Interesting, very interesting with regards to the FTSE 100. Okay, now given the fact that this is the market, the way well, the European markets are obviously positioned this way, you have the Nikkei, you unfill gaps below, so therefore looking to potentially target that. If I bring up the Shanghai itself, you are looking at resistance and inside bar again today, so therefore looking to potentially move lower. Okay, so that's basically the way in which I'm reading this market. Also, give good regards to the SP, you have a HS formation, you have the right shoulder and brewing, and you are looking to potentially thrust lower. 10 minute chart currently the market's trading at the 1993 zone 1993 zone basically corresponds with this horizontal resistance here at 1994 uh, if we do for first higher then you have 2002 gap fill resistance h and target in 1974 folks we did have a pair below at 1977 before reversing and short squeezing higher and therefore given the fact that we are aligned now currently 1994 is the uh, the futures price in the s p therefore you are looking to potentially move lower okay so there's certainly a risk off move is going to ensue that's my interpretation thus far okay right uh, now also the nasdaq as well the nasdaq currently is trading at the uh, uh, 4295 zone yes you do have a bull flag on the daily chart but that certainly is vulnerable to being broken okay uh, 4300 is, is back to your resistance zone on the 60 minute basis 10 minute chart as well you have 4295 4300 as the resistance zone the support at uh, 4260 certainly seems to have held and uh, the market has bounced subsequently now let me just get rid of these diagonal trend lines they're of no use at the moment now and the next resistance like i said is at the uh, 4308 zone okay so given the fact that we are now plus 30 points from the pivot low almost 35 points from pivot low you are looking at risk off a scenario okay right i think that's a market wrap be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs goodbye now